Good morning, thrill seekers. This is David Gillespie with Pumpkin Town Primitives. Uh, today I'm out in the shop and I'm going to cast a few pewter spoons, Lord willing. Today we'll be doing a little casting from my original spoon mold from about 1710. It's a Queen Anne trifid mold. It's uh, bronze. Looks like it has a lot of copper content in it. So stay tuned and we will show you how a 300 year old spoon mold still makes spoons. Here's the inside of the spoon mold in the two pieces. You can see on the, the rear of the, the rat tail finial there. And it's still in great shape after 300 years. It's in good polished order. So the two pieces just go together like that. And then you pour right down the spout. So, let's make a pour here, and I try to go slow, let it fill up to the top and let the sprue come out just a little bit up the top so I can have something to grab hold of. So let's demold here. And as you can see around the edges, there were some incomplete sections. So the first two or three pours generally is um, unsuccessful because the mold is still heating up, and that's okay. I'm going to try this one without any baby powder. Sometimes it works better for me, and sometimes it doesn't. Today is damp in the air, and I know the humidity affects it a lot as well. Generally, it's better not to do it on a humid day. It's always kind of sad to watch one that's not exactly perfect enough to go back into the pot and just kind of fizzle away. But, I kind of look at it like the catch and release program in fishing. We just didn't like this one, so we're going to throw it back and know that it'll make a better one, Lord's willing. And then something. Okay, let's see how that one did. Praise the Lord, that one's perfect. Every bit of it. That one's a keeper. So it took four pours to get our first perfect one. While they cool, you can hear the little noises they make. Sounds like a ping sound. Praise the Lord, that one looks perfect. I like it. I can work with that. So let's see how this one did. Shiny enough to almost eat off of it, man. So after casting and cooling, I'll just take a pair of these uh, cutters and just trim off the flashing. Now for my favorite part, the touch mark. And 
Now with a little file and a little bit of time, you can get all this extra flashing off here. So right especially where the sprue is, just take a file and knock that off. Just take a file generally all the way around the flashing. Just like so. So lastly I use a stock right pad to kind of give it a nice working finish. You can polish it as much as you like. Get it on down, but this is about all I need here. So here is today's catch, so to speak. I had just enough time to cast a few of these. These are just as cast, so they still have the uh, flashing from this mold uh, here. And then, these are two that I have finished up, polished down. And to see the back there. also have another mold which is this one which is the same age it's about 300 years old and it's a, a larger spoon so it's more of what we call a serving spoon so you can see the comparison of size between the two there so we offer these in as cast variety and in finished the as cast are less expensive it's not that much trouble to do on your own, uh, but if you prefer to have me do it for you, I've got these here. So, I well, hope you've enjoyed watching this. This is 300-year-old um, spoon molds and their uh, produce, so to speak. It's a lot of fun. If you've never seen it done or always wanted to do it, I recommend getting a mold and trying it for yourself. You've never, there's not as an experience quite like it. My touch mark is our South Carolina Crescent and my initials JDG for James David Gillespie. So this is David Gillespie with Pumpkin Town Primitives and we invite you to check out our online store at the link below and all of these spoons and each variation thereof are also available on our online store. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.